demand drafts they received. Those 8,500 demand drafts had been issued by one cooperative bank in one day to one consumer. So, uh, RBI, we, we were after RBI to take action against the, not only the bank concern, but also against the individual concern. If a branch manager is signing 8,000 demand drafts in the name of an insurance company for 49,999 rupees, he is aware of what he is doing. And that is one of the prime reasons you were talking of section 12, 12 and 13. I, uh, I have authored the amended uh, sections in the, this amendment bill with this idea that we must have the power to go after such individuals. They have connived. It is not the institution which is at fault here. It is the individual which is at fault. And that is the reason why that graded penalty was also brought in. That the existing section 12 did not give us any, an uh, ex existing section 13 did not give us any leeway. We had to impose a minimum penalty of 10,000 rupees on every contravention on the uh, financial institution. But with this, we could warn the financial institution and we could go ahead and penalize the individual concern. Uh, narcotics cases, we get a large number of narcotics cases from the police agencies, but unfortunately uh, most of these relate to small amounts, small carriers and the kingpins are still not traceable. And of course uh, uh, the fake currency, fake Indian currency notes, that remains a serious problem for the, for the banking sector as well as for the police as well as for the directorate. A couple of case studies to give you an idea of the complexity of uh, work involved. This, uh, the first case, this was a financial crime uh, relating to the capital markets. The charge sheet did not include SEBI Act. This was not insider trading or market manipulation. Finally, the case was made on Section 420, cheating. In, in most of our offenses, eventually we will catch the person because the underlying offense is either 420, uh, that is cheating, or 467, which is forgery. There are certain irregular capital market transactions through which uh, substantial amount of money was made. Uh, so the first step was identify which transactions have taken place. The number of transactions is very large. The accounts from which the transactions have taken place and the accounts where the money has actually gone. The account, uh, the, it was not as if the money was still lying in bank accounts or depositories. The money had been withdrawn. Most of it had gone into property. So uh, the first step was the people involved, their transactions, their bank accounts, and finally the property which they had bought. In many of these uh, uh, transactions, the delivery was off market. So that was another problem. You did not have, uh, you had a problem of getting data on off market deliveries. But finally, about uh, nine and a half lakh shares of one company and another 10 lakh shares of uh, the second company and 73 lakh shares of the third company were identified. And uh, the number of accounts involved will give you an understanding of the complexity of the transactions. Uh, the beneficiaries were uh, three type of people. The people who actually operated on the capital markets, the intermediaries who took a bit of cut and who facilitated the transactions, and finally the financiers, the people who were the real brains, who were not there anywhere on paper, but they had acquired the uh, immovable properties concerned. So in this case, uh, this is the flow of funds. The funds moved from finances to intermediaries to the operators to Benami bank accounts. From there, shares were procured in Benami demat accounts and sold back to operators, back to intermediaries and back to financiers. In this case, approximately 100, 108 crores worth of property, both movable and immovable, has been identified, attached and confirmed. And in Part of the cases, uh, the, these are two FIRs. In one FIR, the prosecution has been launched and six people are undergoing a prosecution for the offense of money laundering.
This is one of the rare cases which originated on the basis of an STR. The STR was relating to advanced remittances coming for exports, but no documents coming. And money kept on coming, but no exports were taking place. Initial allegation was not that exports have not taken place. Initial allegation was that export documents are not being submitted. So perhaps there is a contravention of FEMA. And uh, when the investigation started, it came out that the person did not even have the IEC code number. So he could not have undertaken any export. Uh, now, this is the flow of funds. This was, it's, it's a bit small. The person had cheated a large number of small investors, took the money, withdrew the money in cash, sent it abroad through Hawala, and then brought it back in a different set of companies. And there he was purchasing immovable property. Now, but for this STR, there would have been no link that the first set of companies is linked with the second set of companies. This was a, a rare case where a, comp where a country which cannot act unless there is a mutual legal assistance treaty. They acted in our favor and they attached approximately $25 million worth of assets. And uh, that uh, the case is now going on in their Supreme Court before the money gets transferred to us. Total money which we were able to seize in this case is about uh, about 200 crores worth of property we were able to track. Again here the underlying offense on the basis of which we were able to book a case is uh, section 420 or cheating. Uh, there's more than one country. Uh, but Singapore uh, helped a lot in that case. Third case, uh, many of you would have faced this. A bank's employee working in the IT section creates his own account, starts transferring small amounts in his own bank, uh, in his own account, starts with 10,000 rupees. Then he opened 20 bank accounts, started playing in the stock market. Finally, and he was withdrawing from some interbank reconciliation suspense accounts, interbank reconciliation accounts, which were never audited. So at the end of the at the end of three years, the bank woke up and they realized three crores is missing. Uh, the money had gone into the stock market. About a crore worth, he lost on speculation. About two crores worth of assets we were able to trace in the name, in his name and his wife's name. Uh, this was a case where we felt bad proceeding against the wife uh, because uh, all the money was in her name and without proceeding against her we could have not pro uh, proved the crime of money laundering. Uh, again, because the bank was involved, uh, we were at least able to get access to the flow of funds out of that bank. I stand corrected, about 5 crores was misappropriate and about 2 crores worth of assets we have attached. Uh, there is one immobile property, so presumably it would have been acquired at a price higher than the disclosed price. So maybe we have uh, about uh, half of the proceeds of crime we have uh, traced and attached. This is the flow of funds from uh, the interbank reconciliation accounts he used to transfer to his own account every day and from there he moved it to his own accounts in other banks and from there to his DMAT accounts, his share trading accounts and the acquisition of immobile property. Uh, this case uh, has created a fresh problem for us. Uh, the FATF recommendations as well as our law do not provide for restitution to victims. Now the bank comes and says, we are the only victim. This money is traceable. It is our money. When can we get it back? That is a lacuna in our law and maybe in the next amendment act we will have a look at it. Committed. If a person is uh, has, let's say, 
uh, cheated a bank he has uh, taken a loan from a bank on a forged document and he has withdrawn that money and put that money in insurance then if he cheated that bank of 2 crore rupees the proceeds of crime are 2 crore rupees if he has put 1 crore rupee with you then the property involved in money laundering with you is 1 crore proceeds of crime remain 2 crore but property it is not that we will be able to trace and attach the entire property in this case we would consider it if he has given you 1 crore we would trace it as 1 crore rupee traced and attached what we recover from you will be the realizable value of that 1 crore rupee it is not necessary that we will say he gave you 1 crore rupee we want 1 crore rupee from you or we are going to uh, charge you of connivance and uh, hold you guilty of money laundering in fact in uh, when when we drafted the recent rules on uh, taking over of uh, confirmed attached property there is one gap we have worked out that for dmat we will sell it and we will uh, transfer to the government the realizable value on that day for immovable property we have said we will take it over and we will finally sell it only when the final confiscation to government takes place in case of uh, uh, bank accounts or other liquid instruments we will take the cash value put it in a separate bank account where which will earn interest in insurance we have not been able to work out because suppose we attach something if a person has a single premium property uh, uh, a single premium policy which he took 10 years ago today it is due for maturity after 3 years today we attach it after 3 years uh, today we attach it and we take the realizable value after 2 years he dies the third year the, th the court holds him not guilty what what happens who bears the risk in that period so in insurance we are still trying to work out the modalities but as of now we will only freeze it and we will say you cannot make a payout to that person suppose i have a old customer with all kyc proper transactions in the account suddenly there is a huge cash deposit and when we enquire with him what is this cash he says that i have just sold a small uh, you know inherited property in my village to some farmer and he has paid me this cash he also submits the registered agreement to us now uh, we are a bit confused whether sh this should be reported maybe now that the registrars may report such cash transactions i i'll give you an example for uh, two two examples i can immediately recall a doctor a government doctor was depositing was buying gold in cash a gold against his credit card and his credit card bills he was paying in cash and the amount over the previous 12 months was 1 crore 20 lakhs so when the bank asked him a question he says i am i am my private practice the bank reported it turned out to be okay, it turned out that he was a government doctor and this was corruption money in the second case again the doctor said this is money earned the doctor said okay i have evaded tax the investigation showed that the doctor was running an illegal kidney transplant racket so at your end how can you be sure that you see first of all look at what is uh, 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 what is uh, uh, i have now i have forgotten the uh, rule 8 the transaction it is uh, look at the complexity and uh, the, the why the transaction is economically not justifiable does it make sense for a person to sell a large amount in cash no if he has a bank account it makes sense for him to put it to take an instrument it is safer for him in any case he is putting it in the bank account secondly uh, why you should go in to that extent you are not his tax assessing officer you are not supposed to satisfy yourself about the whether the income tax is due or not due evaded not evaded if the transactions show if if the circumstances show that the transaction deviates from his norm then you are free to uh, file a report so sir i have uh, one question about uh, crimes against uh, the state mm -hmm. terrorism 
does that also fall under the gambit of yes it has always been so uh, as i mentioned prior to, to prior to february 2013 the scheduled offenses were in three parts the first of the first part was where even a single rupee was involved that included waging war against the state that included offenses under the arms act and the explosive act that included counterfeiting of notes which is a various very serious economic crime against the state at in, and finally it included the narcotics uh, laws so if uh, and, uh, and now of course you uh, upi is there unlawful activities prevention act uh the special recommendations the erstwhile special recommendations of fatf they put a lot of focus on terrorist financing and uh we are still focusing on uh, uh tax evasion we have not reached the level of complexity where we are able to detect tf transactions perhaps uh because only a few institutions get affected in fact your institution is one which gets highly affected by tf transactions so they have to be reported certainly and in that money laundering offenses uh, are made out we have a large number of cases going on in the enforcement directorate where the underlying uh, offenses uh, uh, section 121 the one uh, there is one uh, difference that in many such cases where the amount involved in terrorist financing could not be used in the terrorist activity if it gets used in the terrorist activity then there is nothing left to attach if it could not be used then still under uapa the government the home ministry can attach it so in many cases the money laundering offenses will not get registered they will still get covered in uh, section 51 of uapa as uh, uh, financing of terrorist activities so uh, uh, which means that you have still not been working uh, no we have we have a large number of cases of uh, terrorist financing okay so so you, uh, nia and enforcement directorate uh, working together uh, in many cases yes in many cases yes and uh, in fact uh, when when uh, the individual state police is involved then they usually give the case to us the okay. nia can take action under uapa and they can attach the property themselves thank you we go and file sar as well for a customer mm-hmm. if we are if they, if the person is the customer of the bank so do you see it is a good practice or it is a defensive sar because in this situation the banks is in a cash 22 position if you don't file a sar <coughs> you may be questioned in the latter because production orders come from ed you you are not taken actions what do you suggest uh, see uh, when such an str goes to fiu they will do a link and it is possible they may identify other cash transactions other accounts of this individual which have not been reported so they are able to do some linkage and they are able to inform the directorate that this person you are conducting an investigation there are certain more accounts which you may be interested in so it certainly has some value